The Parkinson's Podcast is brought to you by the Davis Finney Foundation and brings you the stories, wisdom, and expertise of people living with Parkinson's, care partners, and Parkinson's professionals. Additionally, we would like to thank our title podcast sponsor, AbbVie, for helping us bring this content to you. AbbVie is committed to recognizing the uniqueness and needs of each person living with Parkinson's and delivering innovative solutions for patients, care partners, and clinicians. In this episode, Davis Finney Foundation Executive Director Polly Dawkins talks with Dr. Boss Bloom about a recent article he co-authored called The Elephant in the Room, Critical Reflections on Mortality Rates Among Individuals with Parkinson's Disease. Hi, everybody. I'm Polly Dawkins, Executive Director of the Davis Finney Foundation for Parkinson's. And I am here today with Dr. Bastian Bloom to talk about his recent article uh, that he published with several other colleagues that discusses Parkinson's and mortality. Before we jump into that, boss, I wonder if you could share a little bit about your background and why you chose to focus your career on Parkinson's and, and really your general approach to this work. Sure, Polly. Well, lovely to see you again, and nice to be speaking to the folks who are supporting the Davis Finney Foundation. Um, my career as a neurologist was not a coincidence. My mother had multiple sclerosis. So as a young boy, uh, uh, my dream was to cure my mother. Mm. So not only was I you know, aiming for a career in medicine, I was aiming to be a neurologist, and I wanted to be a neuroimmunologist and to tackle um, MS. And when I was trained as a medical student, it was really difficult to obtain a residency position in Holland. The best way to boost your career was to go to the United States. So I asked my professor, is there any way you can send me to America? And he said, oh, well, Bill Langston is here next week. I can introduce you if you will. He said, oh, is he an MS doctor? I said, no, no, no. He's one of the world's most famous Parkinson doctors. And I said, but that's no good. He said, yeah, but he works in the Bay Area. I said, all right, all right. <laughs> I'll do the dirty work. And uh, that's, the, that's the fun side of the story. But the reality is I came to Bill's clinic. And from the first moment I met people with Parkinson's, I have been impressed, genuinely impressed by the complexity of Parkinson's as a condition, how wonderful people are in coping with this you know, ordeal, yeah. how wonderful families are in their support. And... To see all these developments ongoing that should give hope to everybody listening today. So I can't even treat MS anymore. And I'm now one of the probably better known people in the Parkinson field in the world. Yes, you are. It sounds like you haven't looked back since those. That, that no, time. Uh, yeah. only looking forward. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, let's, let's talk a bit about the uh, article uh, that, that was published at the end of October and here in 2023. The article was entitled The Elephant in the Room, Critical Reflections on Mortality Rates Among Individuals with Parkinson's. It's a hard topic for so many people in our community. Can you talk a little bit about what motivated you to write this piece? Absolutely. Um, that's why we called it The Elephant in the Room, right? Um, it's It's there. It's not always discussed. I might even say it's often not discussed, but it is the elephant in the room. Will I die sooner because I have Parkinson's? Yeah. And what we argue in this article, and I, I, I thought it was important to get the message out there. Uh, one main reason is that if I, it depends on who I speak to. If I speak to policymakers, if I speak to funding bodies, I will tell them Parkinson's is a deadly disease mm. because I want to raise awareness yeah. that this is a disease that costs years of living. In my clinic, when, my ask, when my patients ask me that question, I tell them, you will grow old. And they are both true. And this paper reconciles these two truths. People do grow old with Parkinson's. Mm. So it's not an acutely deadly disease like ALS. Uh, and or or Alzheimer's disease, but people do actually lose yeah. years of life. And the younger you get Parkinson's, like Davis Finney, the greater the number of years lost. And that's the reality. And I thought 
I wanted to bring this in a nuanced and balanced way because I think that as a Parkinson community, and what I'm going to say next comes straight from my heart, is we've been too kind and maybe too passive. And I think it is time. If we, if we tell the funding bodies, the policymakers, that Parkinson's is a deadly disease, then it receives the attention it deserves. It's the world's fastest growing disease. It's a preventable condition because of the role that the environment plays in causing this disease. And it's a deadly disease. And all that together makes this something worthy of people's attention. And at the same time, I don't want to scare people with Parkinson's because sure. my real task as a physician is to provide hope and perspective. And this, this article, and I hope you enjoyed reading it, yeah. in a nuanced way, it tries to balance these two truths. I still tell my people in my clinic, you will grow old. And that is true. People listening to the podcast today should realize it's not many years. Fortunately, of course, disability grows as Parkinson's continues. So it becomes more and more difficult. Um, but the number of years lost is fortunately limited. It's a couple of years. It's not yeah. tens of years. And the, again, the younger you get it, the greater the number. And I think it is important to get that truth out uh, in order to raise further awareness so that we can find solutions. Yeah, I, I know people often feel comforted when they hear the diagnosis and hear, oh, you won't die from Parkinson's, you'll die with Parkinson's. But then I, I see a lot of tension and maybe anger at that statement that that really isn't as nuanced as as, as it should be. Well, and you actually, and I know this is a painful topic, but it's, but that's why it's good that we're discussing it. I, I disagree that people die with Parkinson's. You actually die of Parkinson's. Yeah. When you fall and fracture your hip, you don't fall by chance. You fall because of Parkinson's and freezing of gait. So Parkinson's is the cause of death, not the hip fracture. Right. If you have difficulty swallowing and you develop an aspiration pneumonia, and you die of that aspiration pneumonia, it's Parkinson's disease yeah. that killed you. If you develop a urinary tract infection because peeing has become difficult and it leads to a sepsis, it's Parkinson's disease that killed you. Yeah. So I'm mentioning the three prime causes of death. They're all related to Parkinson's. And of course, death registries list hip fracture instead of Parkinson's, but that's right. the wrong way of coding you actually die of Parkinson's disease. And I know that's not people maybe want to hear, but that's the truth. And by framing it as such, again, we raise awareness. We need more funding to do the better research. So we prevent these complications. What we need is better treatment to prevent hip fractures. You don't want to repair the broken hip. You want to prevent the fall that leads to the hip fracture. You want to do proper speech therapy to prevent the aspiration pneumonia. Mm -hmm. You want to find urinary urge early so you can prevent the urinary tract infection and prevent the sepsis, right? Yeah. So I think by naming the elephant in the room, I think we can we can fight the beast. Does it make sense? Absolutely. And and I think that's why that that tension exists when people hear that phrase and feel comforted at first, but then realize that's that's actually that's not. That's not the truth that we're dealing with. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. What, do you, what do you think that people and uh, with Parkinson's and their families should know about mortality and Parkinson's? Well, I think they should know that they have a long time to go. Um, you will live long with Parkinson's. That is and remains the truth. You will live with Parkinson's, of course, with increasing disability. And everybody needs to be consciously aware of the main risks towards the more complicated phases of Parkinson's, which is falling and fall-related injuries. It's swallowing problems, dysphagia, like coughing during meals, uh, which is a risk, and the urinary tract problems. And if you 
address those aggressively with your physician, your Parkinson nurse, maybe your GP. Hopefully you can prevent those complications mm -hmm. or the impact thereof and thereby hopefully prolong life. Um, so I think people need to be aware of these common and vexing issues because they are at least partially treatable. I'm not going to paint a, a rosy and shiny picture that I you know, can't deliver. There is a complex phase of Parkinson's where things become difficult. But at the same time, most of these issues are at least partially treatable with an aggressive, integrated, multidisciplinary, person-centered approach. Uh, but you need to find the problems early and don't wait for the fire and then kill it, prevent the fire from happening. Yeah, so education, being aware, having the information, critically important. What what else would you say that an individual with Parkinson's can do? What actions can they take to increase their, maybe the, the quality of their the lives that they, or the, the years that they have? Right. Well, everybody's aiming, of course, for a treatment that can maybe slow down the progression of Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately, you want a cure. That's not realistic within the next one or two decades. But you would like the progression from stopping. I don't think that's also realistic in the short term. But slowing the progression, I think, is within reach. And what I'm going to say next is so close to the heart and the essence of the Davis Finney Foundation is exercise. Exercise is now an evidence-based therapy that works like a drug in suppressing both motor and non-motor symptoms. Uh, and it is probably the first treatment that has delivered some evidence that it could be a disease-modifying treatment. We have shown in a trial in Daniel Korkos in the United States in another trial that people who exercise three times a week for at least 30 minutes at about 80% of their maximum, stabilize their motor progression, whereas people in a control group declined over time. Mm -hmm. And in our study, we did brain scans before and after exercise, and we showed, I mean, it's spectacular, that the brain of people with Parkinson's made new functional connections, new sprouting between the diseased basal ganglia and the healthy cortex, so that the cortex, which is still healthy and viable, could overtake functions formerly attributed to the basal ganglia. So that's totally encouraging. And anybody listening, you know, should exercise. And I tell all my folks in my clinic, don't just do it three times a week, because then there's always tomorrow, every day, 30 minutes. Because if you have to exercise every day, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. You know, there's no tomorrow. Build it into your career. If I develop Parkinson's tomorrow, I get that question sometimes from journalists. I said, I would live on the treadmill. <laughs> and I would steer away from pesticides. Yeah. Um, and any toxic chemicals, you know, just a little sidestep. But we know that these toxic chemicals, including pesticides, but also trichloroethylene, air yeah. pollution, uh, head trauma, um, contribute to causing Parkinson's, but many of those chemicals likely also worsen disease progression after you've been diagnosed. So if you have Parkinson's and if you have only a few living dopaminergic neurons left, you want to make every effort to protect those and steer away from pesticides by eating, you know, biological food if you can. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's really important. So what I'm hearing from you, boss, is that what people can do or what you would recommend people do in response to today's article or last month's article, exercise, avoid pesticides, exposure. And other chemical and other chemicals. Yeah. And other chemicals. So eat clean, um, understand Parkinson's and understand the risks. So understand what causes falls and how to prevent that, what causes swallowing issues and how to prevent that, and then be aware about um, uh, the bladder infections. Yeah. 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 Any other takeaways that you would say that our community should do in response to your article? Um, well, a healthy diet is more than just uh, a, 
avoiding chemicals. Uh, the Mediterranean diet is associated with a reduced risk of developing Parkinson's, but there are now two studies that show that the prognosis is perhaps a bit better if you adhere to the Mediterranean diet. Um, eat like a Greek. Mm -hmm. um, stress management in my clinic is increasingly important. Mm -hmm. uh, mindfulness and yoga are now becoming evidence-based interventions mm -hmm. uh, that help people to suppress symptoms. It's not disease modifying, but Parkinson's is the signature disease that suffers from stress in terms of worsening of symptoms. So optimal stress management is, is, is important. And finally, maybe in closing, just for all the folks listening, I know the issue of mortality dying of Parkinson's or because of Parkinson's is, a, is the elephant in the room and it's, it's a tough topic. But at the same time, the, the hope and the optimism that I want to share with you is this field is very active and very dynamic. There are lots of things happening. There's a new biological classification of Parkinson's underway. There are disease modifying trials being tested in multiple centers across the globe insights into what is happening in the brain is growing by the day. And I've often said that during my active career, I will see the arrival of the first disease-modifying treatments that can slow down progression. You can take matters in your own hands by leading a healthy lifestyle, exercise, stress, and diet, while we as researchers build on um, new evidence for drugs. So it's, in the words of the late Tom Isaacs, who was a brilliant Parkinson advocate, this is a time of cautious hope and optimism, and not a time of pater conservative paternalism. Thank you. Thank you, Boss, for that. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Parkinson's Podcast. For more information about the Davis Finney Foundation and to learn about educational offerings and community events for people affected by Parkinson's, please visit davisfinneyfoundation.org or dpf.org.